What is up photographers? In today's video we're talking about how to make a custom calendar for your guys' holiday needs. I know a lot of photographers love making calendars for the holidays. They are great things to sell and make a little bit of money. And I'm gonna show you guys today how to make a custom one. Now, a lot of you guys have maybe made them before on like, I know Bay Photo is one of the most popular options, but the options are just not good. You have to use their template, their fonts, their holidays, everything like that, it's simply just a drag and drop your photos, which is great if you just wanna throw your photos in there and print out a calendar. But for a lot of you guys, you might wanna create a calendar that's a little bit more on brand and a little bit nicer than just your standard calendar. And you especially don't wanna create one of those really big vertical calendars that a lot of photographers have been creating because those do not hang very well. They're so long and so skinny, even though they show off your vertical photos, but they just generally don't work out that well for the people that buy them. And I wanna show you guys how to create totally custom calendars with your your typeface, your logo, your photos, everything like that, so that your followers and your clients are going to love the calendars. They're gonna come back every single year and buy one because they love how they look, they love your photos, and they love how high quality the calendar is. So in this video, we're gonna be using um, primarily InDesign, uh, Adobe InDesign. So if you have the Creative Cloud and you have all the apps, because you already have Lightroom and Photoshop, you already have InDesign, just make sure you download it before watching this tutorial. If you don't, consider checking out this video and then seeing if you think it's worth it in order to to grab InDesign to make the calendar, but I think it works really great. Calendar's gonna look really cool, guys, and I'm really excited to show you guys exactly how to do it. Um, and I do know a fair amount about designing in InDesign because actually by trade, I'm a graphic designer, um, even though I'm a professional photographer, but I do know a lot about design. So this is a really fun video for me to make because I'm gonna mix the two. So hopefully it's helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments whether it's helpful or not. Here we go, guys. All right guys, so the company that I usually use to do this is called SmartPress. Now the cool thing about SmartPress is it's totally customizable. You can order any amount of calendars. I'm not sponsored at all by SmartPress, it's just the company that I've used. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how it works. So navigate to their website, smartpress.com, and go to products. You can click on products and then click on all calendars. And when you click this, their calendars are gonna come up. These are totally custom calendars. Um, and you've got a lot of options. You can do a desk calendar, magnet calendar, saddle stitch, spiral coil, or wire coil. Now for landscape photographers, or really any kind of photographers, you probably wanna do one of the last three. A uh, saddle stitch is probably gonna be the cheapest way to do it. That's just where there's like a staple on the top. It doesn't really look that nice. Um, and spiral, spiral coil, and wire coil calendars. Both have a coil on the top, as you can see. The difference is that this coil here is gonna be like plastic, this one's gonna be wire. In my opinion, the wire coil calendars are a little bit nicer. They're slightly more expensive, but they are a little bit nicer. So I think if you want your photography to look really nice, use wire coil calendars. You can go ahead and click on that or whichever calendar you wanna use, and now you've got a ton of options. Now, ultimately what we wanna do is download the template over here for whichever size we want in 2023. Um, but what I like to do is try and decide on the size. So you can go ahead and adjust all of these settings and get the estimated cost. So for the sake of this example, I'm gonna make a nine by 12. So I'm gonna change the size to 12 by nine. Um, let's say that I wanted to order 50. I'm not going to adjust the number of pages because that's the correct amount. And then you can choose all sorts of different paper. I believe you can also request some paper samples here from SmartPress if you want on their website so you can see. But what I recommend is using a pretty thick cover. Um, this is just 80 pound cover, 100 pound cover, 120 pound cover. The higher the number, the thicker it is. Text is gonna be a little bit thinner, so you definitely wanna use cover. I like using 120 cover for my calendars. And then on the inside, I also like using probably like 80 cover. Rather than using text, which is a really thin paper, I like to use cover because it gives your calendar a little bit more thicker and substantial feel. As I change these options, you'll see the price changes over here. Um, and you want full color, most likely, on all of your pages here and then you can go over to the coating. I like using the ultra gloss or the flat matte. It's just totally up to you which one you wanna use. Um, and I don't do anything to the laminating. The binding, I like using a black coil, but you can use a white one if you want. And we want a top side binding for the kind of calendar I'm making. You could do left side binding, but top side is generally the more traditional way to do it. Um, the drilling options, you want a hole drilled in the center. That's going to be like this hole right here. So you can hang it. 
You can put a calendar hanger on it. It does cost a little bit more money. I don't usually do that. And then shrink wrapping service. Um, I usually like to do individual wrap with chipboard. It does increase the cost a little bit, but that's nice to do because then you already have your calendars shrink wrapped and you can easily ship them out to your clients. So you can select all those settings and then choose the production time. If you slow the production time down, it's going to make it a little bit cheaper usually. Um, and you want to probably do a ground print printed hard proof. This is means that they're going to send you an actual copy of the calendar uh, for you to approve after you've submitted it. You can do a PDF soft proof as well, but that won't tell you if your colors are correct, especially with landscape photography. You want to make sure that your colors are right. So for that reason, um, if it's your first time printing here with smart press, I would do the ground printed hard proof. Um, and then as you adjust the quantity, like you can see, if I do a hundred, it's going to change right now. My unit cost is about 1458 per calendar. If I do a hundred, it drops down to 1132 and maybe I'm going to do 200 and that's going to drop my cost to 942. So the more you print, the more it's going to cost, obviously, but the less per unit it's going to cost. So if you think you're going to sell a lot, order a lot and get that price a little bit cheaper. So anyways, after you've dialed in these settings, you're going to have to change this again, but I always just show people how to do it because it's nice to know what it's going to cost you before you do all the designing. Then you're going to come down here and select the size that you chose. Um, you, of course, want to do 2023 wire coil calendar templates. And I am going to do a 12 by nine. Now there's options for other sizes if I wanted to do that as well. But like I said, I'm doing 12 by nine. You have the option to download the PDF or the IDML. For this tutorial, we're gonna be showing you how to do it in InDesign. So for that reason, we want the IDML, which is an InDesign file compatible with all years of InDesign. Once that downloads, it's gonna appear up here. You can double click and open that, which I have already done. And once you have this open in InDesign, it's going to look like this. This gives you some instructions um, and none of these will be printed out on your final photo. In InDesign, there's a way that you can add things to your file that aren't going to be printed and that's what they've done here. They've set up their file really, really nicely for you to be able to edit it. You can read these if you want, but basically long story short, the blue line is your bleed, meaning all of your photos need to extend out to the blue line because they need a line to cut on to make sure that your edge isn't white and then you actually have photo that bleeds over to the edge. You've got the safe margin, which is where you should put all the text. Um, it shows you where the coil is and then it shows you where the drill hole is. So you can actually scroll down here. Now, if you press W on your keyboard, that hides everything and shows you like the print preview. So this is how it would print right now as it is. Obviously, that's not what we want, but you can hide all of the text here in order to see your print preview. So once you have your calendar loaded out here, you want to drag and drop your photos. I'm just gonna show you a couple quick example photos here. Um, I've got them up here, I exported them. I exported them as the same size as the calendar, so I just did short edge as nine inches. Now I have all three of these photos. You can drag and drop them all at once, and now you'll see there's a little three right there next to the photos, and you can do each one at a time, but this is a way you could drag like all 12 or 13 photos at once. Drag and drop. You're gonna scroll down to the February photo and we're going to drag and drop and we'll scroll down to the March photo and drag and drop. Now I might want to change these photos later but I'm just gonna show you a quick example here. But you're probably noticing um, if I hit W, I can see the print preview, the photos are way off to the right. So what you can do here, um, first of all, is crop this. So when you click on the photo, you're going to have a blue outline. Essentially what that blue outline means is that is where um, that's called the clipping mask on your photo. So you can drag this in here in order to crop the photo, but that doesn't actually move the photo itself. You'll notice if you click on the photo and move it, the photo, uh, the whole mask of the photo is going to move. So you need to click on this little center circle here and get orange on the outside, and then you can drag, and that is going to allow you to drag the photo. So that looks pretty good. We'll go down here and do the February photo. Same thing when you have the blue line, bring that in over here, click on the center, and then you can move it. Now, a cool thing with InDesign, when I click and hold, it's gonna actually like load out a preview. So now I can actually drag this photo and see what it looks like as I drag it. And I'm not sure why this got dragged up, but we'll bring it back down just like that. Hit W, make sure it looks good still and we will do this photo as well. So dragging and dropping the photos is relatively simple here. Um, and I, again, I'm toggling W in order to see the print preview, but dragging and dropping the photos is pretty easy. I wanna show you guys why it's really cool to make a custom calendar. So go to window, 
workspace and do essentials classic. That's how I'm going to show you guys how to do this. This is going to give you some options on the right. First thing you want to do is click on layers and this is going to show you the layers. So they have really nicely created this file so that you have all the layers in here and you can change things um, as you wish. So for example, they have the moon phases on the calendar and you probably, maybe you don't want moon phases. All you need to do is hit that eyeball there and that will bring all the moon phases away. Now they also have holidays. You can turn the holidays off if you want to. Uh, you could go in and delete individual holidays. Maybe you don't want Valentine's Day. You can click on it and click delete. Um, so if there's certain holidays that they have on here that you don't want, uh, they're pretty easy to remove. Now, the other thing that you can do here is this year they added these mini calendars, which are these little, um, I'll show you the print preview, these little calendars on the top right. Again, you can toggle those off if you don't want them there. Now, the really cool thing to kind of make this on brand for your photography is that you might have some fonts that you really like using and you can customize these fonts to make it really fit your brand for your photography. So to customize these fonts, you're going to go to paragraph styles. And again, these are organized really nicely for you here. And what paragraph styles are is it's essentially um, an assignment to certain boxes of text that tell that box of text exactly how to act and what kind of text to show, what font, etc. So they have these nicely laid out. So for example, if I click on month, uh, double click on month rather, and then I'm gonna go down to basic character formats. I'm gonna check preview so that it's on. Now if I change the typeface, let's say I wanted to change it to Avenir, you can see how my font changes. And you can do any kind of font you want. Let's just say I'm gonna use Bernina Sands for this example. And maybe I want compressed extra bold. Maybe I want to bring the size up as well um, to 70 point. So actually let's go like 90, make it a little bit larger. And if you wanted to change the leading or the tracking or anything like that, if you know what those are, you can do that here as well. I'm not going to explain it because it's not super important, probably not something most of you guys will be doing. But if you do know how to use those, you can change those here as well, as well as anything else. If you wanted to do a certain color or anything like that, you could go down to character color. You could change it to blue. Whatever you want to do, you can make it really on brand. So you can go ahead and hit OK. Now, um, we used, what font did we use? Again, we used Bernina Sands. So let's say that I wanted to change my days. And I want to change the days to, I'm going to use Bernina Sands again. Um, you could also use Bernino Sands if you wanted to try and find a, like a nice font pairing. Um, if you know anything about typography, you probably know a little bit about pairing fonts, so you can do this as well. Or if you just want to be simple and you're a photographer, you don't know anything about typography, just use the same font. It's not a huge deal. Um, but you can go ahead and adjust these as you see fit. So right now I'm adjusting the days. So I'm adjusting up here where it says Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And they're looking a little small with this font. So I'm just going to increase the size a little bit. Just like that looks good to me. Maybe I'll add a little bit of tracking to kind of space those letters out. And we can go ahead and hit OK. Now, same thing with the dates. I'm going to make the dates the same font, Bernino Sands. We'll do extra bold. And we could make the dates a little bit bigger. One thing that a lot of people complain about when I ship out calendars is the dates are so dang small. If you're older or you don't have good eyesight, it's nice to have a little bit larger dates. So you can bring these dates, you can make them as large as you want. Uh, maybe I want to do a really cool, like large date because that's like on brand for me maybe. Um, and I'm going to do like that, make it large. I'm going to hit OK. And then of course you want to change the holidays as well. Let's change this to same typeface. Let's do Bernina Sands for this one. Compressed extra bold. And maybe I just want this one regular bold. And I want to make the holidays maybe about that large hit OK. So you can see already I have adjusted the fonts. Maybe at this point I'm not liking these calendars up here, so I can go ahead and toggle that off here with the eyeball where it says mini calendars. Um, and I just want to review here and make sure that everything looks good because a lot of times when you change sizes and change fonts and stuff, things can kind of bleed over. So one thing that you can do is go in and move things around. So let's say that you wanted to move these dates up. Now you'll have to do this individually on each month. One thing you'll notice here is that some things you might be able to drag around like the holidays, which aren't locked, but these dates, they are locked. So if you wanna unlock them on a Mac, that's gonna be a command shift and a click. 
and on a PC, it's going to be control shift click. Now that you've selected it, I could move this around. So if I wanted to move it up, I could. Now, if you're going to do something like this, what I recommend is moving it with your arrow keys. So you can make sure you move each one the same amount of spaces. Um, so for example, I might use my arrow keys and tap up three times. Maybe let's do five times. So I just hit up on the arrow keys five times. Now it's only going to do that for that particular month. So you have to come in and unlock each one and do five clicks. So again, that was command shift click on a Mac or control shift click on a PC. One, two, three, four, five. You could go through and do that on each and every one. One, two, three, four, five. And you of course want to look to make sure that none of your, like you can see this holiday here, um, it got a little too large. You can do command plus to zoom in is what I just did. I can drag this out and this is the first day of something. First day of Women's History Month. So that's probably an important thing to keep on your calendar. So you can drag that up and make it just so that it's two lines. And you can see your possibilities are basically endless here to do. Of course, you want to add your photos to each page. You can hit W to show, uh, again, the text. And you'd want your April photo here. And you can scroll all the way down. And then on the last page, you have a back photo. So you can put a photo there. You can put a preview, whatever you want. And then, of course, you have the front cover here where you might want to put some text and say, like, 2023 landscape photography calendar or Utah photos calendar, or whatever kind of calendar you have. Um, so you have lots of options over there. You've got your text tool here. You can click on the T, create some text, and write, like, 2023 Utah calendar and bring this out, make it a little bit larger, put your photo in the background. You can drag and drop your logo onto it. So you can see your possibilities are basically endless. Um, it's really, really easy to use. Once you're done, you can go up and hit file. You can go down and hit export, and then it's going to walk you through some of the settings in order to export this calendar, um, and then re-upload it back to SmartPress, at which point you would click on add to cart, you'd pay for it, you would upload your file, and then they'll either send you the PDF soft proof or they will send you a hard copy, depending on which option you choose. So hopefully that helps you guys to make a custom calendar. I think they are a lot better than just using a template. All right, well, that's a wrap. Hopefully you guys have created a really awesome epic calendar that you guys can sell that's on brand with your photos and it looks absolutely beautiful and it's totally customized the way that you want. If there's something in particular that you're trying to do to your calendar that you can't quite figure out, drop a comment down below, shoot me a message, whatever. Let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you guys because I want to make sure you create amazing calendars for your clients and for your followers. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video and we will see you guys next time. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.